Hey everyone, we're back with more Kingdom of Loathing. So I'm running around the curped death rattling. This is the special encounter I got. Presumably for reasons. Deep in the defiled cranny. Well, as deep as one can get in a cranny, really. You come across a wall covered with those stone plates they use to cover up those drawers they put coffins in. What do they call those things? Uh, you don't know. What you do know is that a couple of them appear to have been tampered with. Their covers are askew and crumpled into rubble on the ground, respectively. Of the two that are closed, one of them is silent, and one seems to have something rattling around inside of it. Isn't that fun? So we can open up the closed one, the open one. Dig through the rubble on the ground, open the rattling one. Let's crawl inside. Crawl into the drawer. It's nice and empty, but it's so dark and quiet, you take advantage of the opportunity to have a nice little nap. Man, nice is an understatement. You wake up feeling more refreshed than you felt in years. Shit. Damn. A gluttonous ghoul. You got ghoul goulash. You find a gluttonous ghoul. This is an extremely well-fed ghoul. Not so well-fed as to not still be hungry for your flesh, though. Jump him. Bonk. We bonk the shit out of him. Gluttonous ghoul. I've been uh, grinding in here a little bit. You're finding a gaunt wall, oh, which is the same image, but it's squished. <laughs> That's funny. Um, this ghoul hasn't been eating very much of his decaying flesh. Normally, this is a good thing, but for ghouls, it's pretty unpleasant. You should put him out of his misery. Gets the jump on you. It pokes you in the face with his bony fingers. Uh, we lose one hit point. We bonk him. Cool. Gaunt Gwal. Gwal egg and Gwal ears. I want to get the special encounter again. Because I feel like um, I could just like pound on this for a while. Oh, man. In a surprise move, the Gutland Gwal kills you. It takes a couple pretty good <laughs> chunks out of your dead flesh before a uh, random lightning strike brings you back to life. <laughs> Critical hit. That's kind of funny, actually. <laughs> um, you lose two hit points from spooky damage. All right. All right. Can I get the thing again? I started recording. I want to get it. Damn you. See, I actually got it while I was um, not recording, and I just left it alone. Jeez, guys, this is embarrassing for me. Stuff like this, by the way, is why the episodes are so long. There we go. Um, let's open the closed one. Oh, we find a bunch of meat. In the drawer, you find a perfectly preserved set of clothes. Looks like whoever or whatever broke into this thing was only interested in the flesh. You rifle through the pockets and help yourself to the meat you find. After all, it's not going to do this absence of a person any good, is it? Can we get another? I don't feel great about my chances considering how long that was. You're fighting a huge ghoul. This is without a doubt the biggest ghoul you've ever seen. A spooky aura radiates from its decaying flesh. Get the jump on it. Whoa, this is a random boss. It's like a gold shadow or something. The huge ghoul feeds on a nearby corpse and looks refreshed. It regains one HP. Wow. At the last breath, which in case you're wondering, was foul smelling went on for a long time, Escapes the heels, ghoul. Your evilometer beats once very loudly. Oh, so that's how it works. Okay. I kind of thought that I wouldn't have to, yeah, go through every single one. But uh, that might take a while. Um, so I could go and do that again, but I could also go elsewhere. My Mike Large Huge. Um, actually, we should go through the uh, typical tavern. Drunken rat. Actually, let's just... Ooh, a rat. Crate. Crate full of rats. Explore the drachness. A rat's home. Your progress is stopped by what appears to be a castle constructed from leftover crates. A dozen rats bravely man or rat the battlements, raising their tiny arms in defiance of your imminent siege. Kick it over. 
you kick down the crate castle and send the rats, brave as they are, scurrying back home to their filthy rat mothers. Picking through the wreckage, you discover the source of their bravery, three bottles of tequila. <laughs> nice. Nice. Let's adventure again. Flip it. Nice. Drunken rat. Nice. So, um, to make sure that I used all my adventures, I actually did uh, adventure while I was not recording it, um, which is one reason why I'm so essentially over leveled, and it's kind of unfortunate. Staring down the barrel, your progress through the darkened cellar is blocked by a massive barrel of beer. You know what we do with barrels around these parts, don't you? Smash it. You smash the barrel, refilling empty bottles with beer you sop off the floor afterwards. Three ice cold willers. Create expectations. Your explosion in that direction, in that direction is blocked by a big pile of crates labeled miscellaneous booze. You're going to have to deal with them if you want to make any progress. Gin, wine, and rum. Cool. In the darkened corner of the cellar. But then again, aren't all the corners of the cellar darkened? You make a grisly discovery. The corpse of an adventurer. He must have been defeated by the rats. You examine his gear more closely and determine that he was a seal clubber. That doesn't bode well. Might as well make the best of his bad luck. You get a seal blubber candle, a wretched looking seal, a Bengal balm, and a shiny ring. Yo! Okay, let's take a look. What does this do? You swallow the diet pill and prepare to eat less. What? Eat less, enjoy it more. Claims you eat less but still feel full. Can I eat more? No. I was probably, of course, supposed to take it earlier, but that's okay. A uh, shiny ring. This is a ring which are both shiny and magical. All attributes plus three. Nice. Bengal balm. Balm. This is a small canister of potent smelling balm. Rubbing this in your muscles will make them bigger, more flexible, and more peppermint smelling than they were before. Go get them, tiger. Tiger. Three adventures. Muscle plus three. And then we got to the seal's blood. Interesting. Um, let's go to the equip screen. Hmm. I could lose the hot damage and get a bunch of bonus stats. And I think I kind of like that. Was it the shiny ring? Yeah. Because I feel like just getting big, huge, high stats is pretty solid. Actually, let's go talk to the council. I probably did something. Um, Bugging us better route problem. Well done. You seen the boss bat. Oh, right. I forgot I did that. Uh, and then all that stuff. Cool. We uh, got that out of my fucking crawl. I shouldn't swear on this. I'm sorry. Uh, some bacteria. One of those. One of those. All right. Now, what do we got right now? Miscellaneous, I think. Yeah, we got the wretched looking seal. Bonk him. Nice. Cute baby seal. You've summoned too many infernal seals today. Any more and you're afraid the corruption would be too much for you to bear. Had you been summoning infernal bears, the corruption would have been too much for you to seal. Damn it. Damn. I suppose that's fine. I got a lot of good out of my, uh, out of the bonus adventures anyway. Um, I guess I'll have to do that next time. Well then, that's unfortunate. Let's go back to the typical tavern. I feel like I can finish this out. Yeah. I like getting beer. Drunken rat. A furry pill. What is a furry pill? Also, what do rat whiskers do?
Rat Castle, and Tequila. Uh, I made two Tetraminos. I did this for reasons. Furry Pill. Removes a negative effect and restores a bunch of hit points. You're not sure if this pill was originally furry, but it's got a respectable coat of fur after spending who knows how long in the cellar. Intriguing. Let's head back. Drunk Rat. You follow the sounds of skittering and scratching to a spot at the edge of the tavern cellar, where the source of the plague of rats becomes apparent. Someone left a rat faucet on. How careless. <laughs> Turn it off. You close the valve. The torrent of rats slows to a trickle of rats, and then no rats at all. <laughs> Does it... <laughs> If it's tiny, it's still a mansion. Investigating the source of dim light in the tavern cellar, you discover to be the front porch of a tiny mansion. That's all this about. Knock on the door. You're fighting Baron Von Ratsworth. You knock on the door, and after a few moments, a sophisticated-looking rat in a top hat and monocle answers it. <laughs> I'm sorry, he says, but the rudeness of adventures these days is a development I cannot abide. Can't a member of the upper classes enjoy a spot of afternoon tea without being harassed by fortune hunters? It will not stand. Oh, he's a classist. We're going to fuck him up. He tosses his teacup to the ground, advances on you with malice gleaming in one eye, and a slightly larger malice gleaming in the eye with a monocle on it. Jump on you. He slings his top hat like a frisbee or a hubcap and takes a chunk out of your arm. Lose four hit points. You swing the severed flipper and hit your foe, but it is so tough you only manage to deal seven damage. If you were more muscular, you'd be able to do some real damage to opponent this strong. Um, hmm, interesting. Flings his monocle like a shirk and it hits you in the face. Then he retrieves it via the detached chain. Crit. You seethe with fury as your taut, sinewy arms tense up in preparation for a massive attack. You hit him for a shitload of damage. Uh, and we recover the health that we had lost. Let's keep it going. You strike a glancing blow with a severed flipper and deal a paltry five damage. This opponent might be a little out of your league. Keep it going. Uh, he takes a short cup for a uh, he, he takes a short break for a cup of tea. Rudely, he doesn't offer you any. Let's just keep critting him. <gasps> yeah. You let an entire gallon of fury bubble to the surface and draw back your arm for a raging attack. You fuck his ass up. Baron Von Ratsworth Monocle. Drunken rat. Fight another drunken rat. I can just keep it going, I guess. Interesting. <laughs> Hot and cold running rats. You approach the turned off rat faucet. Since it's presumably still connected to the municipal rat supply, you could probably get another rat out of it if you turn it on for a sec. Yeah, it just you just get rats out of it. Tiny mansion. The little mansion is silent and empty, you having slain the man or rat of the house. Getting a lot of mileage out of that. I notice. Um, let me see here. Baron Von Ratsworth. 10% item drops for monsters. And that's okay. I'll actually head back here. I want to finish this out. No. Oh, damn. Darkness. This with the whole dungeon empty. The whole Bessamonte. It's all empty. Stairs back up. Bart Ender. Rat faucet left on, huh? That was probably Luann. She was always doing ditzy stuff like that. Rot unfriendly to the customers. Two. That's why I fired and divorced her. Anyway. Anyhow, thanks for your help, Dusky Alfred. Here, by way of thanks, a few drinks on the house. Three flagons of typical tavern swill. This is a flagon of the delicious swill they serve at the typical tavern. If you drink it, it's sure to make you start rocking back and forth, because where there's a swill, there's a sway. Sorry. <laughs> the description says sorry. That's funny. So can I um, just put 500 in here and play pool? Oh, damn. 
Scratch nods at you, tipping his fedora. I suppose I can take that bet, but I warn you, I'm pretty new at this. Foosball is more my game. I'll imagine you'll fly up the floor with me. Sure you don't want to double that bet? You decline, he chuckles. All right, then I'll break. He opens up a little case and pulls out a pool, a pool cue in three parts, which he screws together like Venom from Guilty Gear. Then he deftly swipes the tip with chalk, lines up his shot, and sinks half the balls on the break. See, I told you I wasn't very good on this. Sure you don't want to double down? Easy money. You decline to say that while he's a good pool player, he's the world's worst hustler and let the bet stand. Scratch quickly runs the table and pockets your meat with a satisfied nod. Now, if you want to hear a real game, if you want to see a real game, you should hit me up at the pool, foosball table just as soon as the timer gets one. And he walks off to find some sucker to part with some meat. What about you? Damn. Chet makes sure that both of his collars are properly propped, pays on a little more body spray, and accepts your bet. Let's make this a fair match, Romeo and Juliet. You promise to play fair, and he lets you break. As you lean over the table, though, something taps you on the butt. You jump up, your shot going wild, and dropping the cue ball in its side pocket. You spin around, and Chet's holding his frat paddle. Oh, did I tap you, Rosetta Stone? Sorry about that. Guess it's my turn now. He hands his paddle to a nearby sorority orc, chalks his cue, and proceeds to run the entire table. Sinks the eight ball and walks away to count his winning, leaving you with a lighter wallet and two sets of red cheeks. What a jerk. Oh, cool. Now, I shouldn't do this again, but I just want to get it back a little bit. Ah, uh, whatever. It doesn't fucking matter. I'm so rich. Wait, not you. The council. Um, oh, did I already talk to them? Oh, right. They just were like, hey, go talk to him. Uh, let's do this. Outskirts of Cobb's Knob. Let's uh, serve our sentence because I think it gives me more stuff. Yeah. Kick the chef. Nice. 109 damage. Shit. That was amazing. Uh, I didn't mean to go all the way back there. All right, let's go to the barracks. Fighting a swarm of knob lice, carefully stepping around the filthy straw mattresses that line the wall of the barracks, you trip over a footlocker and fall face first into one of them. You're not injured by the fall, but you manage to stir up a pretty angry swarm of lice. Ick. They get the jump at you. They try to bite you in the short hair, but you already shaved those off. Cool. Knob Goblin Elite Guard. Seven of the barracks, an elite guard stepping out of it. Since his job is to protect the knob from outsiders, and you're definitely an outsider, and his mother didn't rage any shirkers, he springs into action. He lunges to a nearby weapon rack to get, grab a pole arm, but you trip him before he can reach it. You get the jump on him. Cool. You're fighting an off duty Knob Goblin Elite Guard. Walk into Cobb's Knob Barracks and encounter another elite guard getting ready for bed at the end of his shift. Lucky for you, you didn't catch him with his pants down. And also luckily for you, you did catch him with his helmet off. He tries to stomp your toes, but he hits the little piggy that's at the market. Knob Goblin Elite Pants. Uh, This guy again. Cobb's knob versus the brow. Uh, you walk into the barracks and find yourself alone among the filthy storm mattresses. As you turn to leave, you notice one of the guards has forgotten to lock his footlocker. We loot it. Knob Goblin Elite Polearm. I think this will allow us to just walk in, right? I remember that being a thing. Um, knob Goblin Elite Polearm. It's two-handed. The damage is actually not bad. Weapon damage plus three as well. Uh, and then we put on the Nom Goblin pants. Or no, Nom Goblin elite pants. Power 60. Shit, man. That's uh, that's incredible. I'm okay with not having my three-legged pants on, even though they give me more muscle and health. I have too much health as it is. I leveled up my character too much. Um, Cops not barracks. Loot the locker. Nom Goblin elite helm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now we got it. Oh, and it changes your picture, and it looks like crap because the art's old. <laughs> That's uh, interesting. Um, let's go to the harem. A massage with a message. Knob Goblin Madam salutes when she sees your uniform. Half and daily treatment, soldier, she asks. Uh, sure, you say. 
She leads you back behind a curtain where there's a harem girl standing next to a low table. She motions for you to lie down. Then she rubs your neck and shoulder while she tells you a very interesting story. She brings the characters to life so vividly you can't help but desperately hope things will turn out all right for them. Fortunately, at the end of the massage, you find that the prince and princess get married and have lived happily ever after. You feel your body has been refreshed by the massage and your soul is refreshed by the happy ending. That's nice. The Therein lies the rub. The knob goblin madam frowns when she sees you. Did your harem girl forget to finish your story, soldier? No, she finished it. It was really heartwarming. I think one happy ending a day is enough, don't you? She says, showing you a... You're not the only guard in the whole knob. You leave before you arouse too much attention. Interesting. Meet for nothing in the harem for free. Step up to the window and... You step up to the window with a treasury. See a knob goblin, knob goblin bean counter inside, tallying up a hill of beans, muttering... 1,375,265. One mi- I have dyslexia. You knock on the window bars and he jumps up, knocking a hill of beans over. Oh, for you couldn't have waited to count your salary, collect your salary until I was done counting, he whines. Looks pretty pissed, but he also looks like a guy who knows which one of you has the pole arm. He gruffly shoves a parcel of meat through the pass through and turns back to his beans with a sigh. You hear him say, one, two, as you knock, as you walk away. Nice. Kitchens. The cake boss. You stomp to the kitchen, rattling your armor and pounding the pole arm on the floor. You grab, an, you grab an apprentice chef by his apron and haul him up till he's at your eye level. You! The Goblin King requires a cake pan. But, 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 but we're not even supposed to let guards in here. Yeah, and I'm not supposed to impale chefs on my pole arms. But one of us is going to break the rules today. You shout and drop the apprentice. He scurries off and comes back with a cake pan. You stomp to the kitchen and find the same apprentice you, you threatened before. He tries to hide behind a butcher's block when you come in, but you grab him by the lapels. You, the Goblin King requires some of your finest cake batter. B-b-b-b-b-b-b- the apprentice stutters. Look, you say, setting me down. I'm just trying to do my job here. Either you give me the batter, or I'm going to batter you with my pole arm. And then I'm going to roll you in batter and fry you, okay? And nobody wants that. The apprentice scurries off and returns to the bowl of batter, thereby affording, avoiding being the victim of battery. We get not batter. Jacking frosting. Stop to the kitchen again. But before you can grab anyone and, bell- and uh, bellow, an apprentice hands you a can of frosting. I figured you wanted this, and I thought I'd spare you any more frets of violence, he says. That's downright considerate of you. Thanks. You take the frosting and go. Is there any more? It's not the kitchen, <laughs> and the apprentice looks at you curiously. What else do you need, he says. Huh, you say, stopping and think about it. I guess nothing. In fact, I totally forgot what I came in here for. Sorry. Uh, you turn to go, but the apprentice tugs at your elbow. Uh, before you go, could you grab your sh- my shirt and lift me in the air one more time? You know, for old times' sake. Okay, it turned weird, and you leave as quickly as you can. <laughs> the Goblin King enters the door and sees your outfit. His face lights up. My cake! He exclaims. His delight is replaced by anger as you as he realizes you haven't brought him a cake. Then your face is replaced by a face that has just been punched by an angry, hungry Goblin King. Door slams shut. Uh, locked and we don't have the key. Does this do anything? Oh, we can just bonk him. Cool. Um, let's go craft things. Let's cook. Oop. Let's cook. Knob batter with a knob cake pan. Unfrosted knob cake. And then let's put knob frosting on the unfrosted knob cake bake costs one adventure interesting you need a more advanced cooking appliance oh all right guess we'll go here i uh already forgot where it told me to go baking supply that would make sense right oh i need one of these General store. Here we go. Dramatic range. Use that. Install the fancy oven, significantly modernizing your outdoor kitchen. Knob frosting right on that cake. One adventure. Knob cake. Nice. Now it's just back to just being big. Cool. While I'm in this screen, let's combine my vodka with 
my oranges. Oh, damn. Rum and orange? Rum and... Lemon? Oh, wait. Can I make a rum and cola? Yeah, all right. And then tequila and... Oh, hell, what goes in tequila? Oh, wait, box wine and strawberry or something, right? Strawberry wine, yeah, look at that. Uh, I'm going to go drink one because I am actually starting to run out of adventures a little bit. Let's drink this. Five adventures, two beefiness, three drunkenness, one cheek, and three wizardliness. Cool. Uh, that's good. You drink the swill. Turns out the swaying is caused by trying really, really hard to not vomit. All right. Back to the nearby plains. Back to the Cobb's Knob. And back to the throne room. You're finding the Knob Goblin King. You walk into the Goblin King's throne room. He barely glances at you as you hand him the cake and buries his peggy little face into it. Wait a minute, he says. This isn't red velvet. It's blue suede. I'll have to report to your superior officer for the right after I flog you senseless. You doff your helmet for a moment so the king can look at your face. Actually, I'm not one of your guards. I'm the adventurer who's going to beat you up and steal your crown. But that's not fair, the king splutters. You say that so often, one wonders what your basis for comparison is. You say, readying your polearm. He gets the jump on you. He hypnotizes you with his giant cod piece. And then smacks you with his meaty hand. You lose nine hit points. We bonk him. You grab the end of your knob goblin elite polearm, hold it out in front of you, and spin around in a circle, hitting him twice for a bunch of damage. You feel like a martial arts adept turtle. We got the crown of the goblin king. This is the crown... <laughs> this is the crown which was worn by the now deposed king of Cobb's knob. This is much better than that crappy dolphin crown. We also got the key to the labs. And we got all... We got one of everything. Damn. That's dope. And we got two meat stacks. Uh, let's take a look at our equipment. Do, do, do. Wait. What did you give me? The crown. Right. It's a hat. Of course it is. It's 70 power. No, not that one. No, wait. Yes, that one. Cool. Now, for the people at home. I'm going to read out all of his, uh, I'm going to read out all of his dialogue. Doop doop doo Uh, so yeah, you can actually put on, uh, a disguise from the harem girl. You have to bonk, you know, a bunch of harem girls instead of soldiers. Uh, that requires you to not have weapons though, which kind of sucks. Um... You sashay into the Knob Goblin King's throne room to find him spinning a set of glass spheres in the palm of one hand. <laughs> he looks up distracted. I'll be ready for you in a minute. Right after I'm through playing with my... This is a family game, you say, lifting your veils. The only physical contact we're going to have is my face with your face. Uh, he has a chance to drop glass balls of the Goblin King. Um... His hit messages are, he smacks you square in the forehead with his scepter. He throws his crown like a boomerang. It makes a satisfying ringing noise as it bounces off your nipple. He, draw, he tosses three glass balls at you, hitting you in three painful locations. He says if you do as he at, says, he will be your slave. You point out the opposite would be true, and he punches you. He turns into an owl and claws you in the ear with his talons. And then we got that one. He throws. He produces a glass ball, throws it in the air, and uses his scepter like a bat to smack it toward you. It strikes you solidly in the calf. Too bad he didn't strike out with a swing. He swings his scepter at you, but you dodge, leaving the scepter merely a specter of a threat. Three. Uh, he throws his crown at you, but you catch it and wing it right back. He tosses three glass balls at you, but none of them hit you. He tries to mesmerize you with his codpiece, but you avert your eyes. 
He says, if you do as he says, he'll be your slave. You point out that the opposite is actually true. He turns into an owl, but instead of attacking you, he delivers some mail. He juggles his three glass balls in front of you. <laughs> Before he can throw them, his robe opens to reveal another knob goblin sticking his arm out of the sleeve and doing the actual juggling. <laughs> the king is too embarrassed to attack. <laughs> Let me see here. This is a reference to King K. Rule throwing your crown at you. The whole thing is, uh, this is all a reference to Labyrinth. Yeah, that's the, he didn't actually do the, <laughs> the juggling. David Bowie does not know how to juggle. He had to have a stunt juggler who just stuck his arm in David Bowie's shirt and did it for him. Uh, and then naturally, the uh, Owls Delivering Letters is the uh, Harry Potter series is written by Hatsune Miku. Man, that was dope. That was really cool, actually. A fun fight. Um, we're going to pop our Severed Flipper back on. Because uh, now I just don't care. And then I think we're just going to keep everything else, right? Or no, we actually need the uh, four ball. Yeah, Slee's damage. Actually, we're doing so much damage that I feel like getting more money would be good. Even though I have so much money, it doesn't really matter either. But, you know. To the labs. Dispensary. You approach the window of the dispensary, and a gruff voice calls out, Password! Uh, you reply, Guards! Shouts the voice. To summon some guards. Who beat you up? Uh, the knob shaft. You fighting a ghost miner. Apparently, this mine is haunted, because as you near the shaft, you're attacked by what appears to be a ghost miner. He's decidedly uncom unaccompanied by a ghost parent or ghost guardian, and he's swinging his ghost matic down in a decidedly dangerous fashion. Jump him. He pulls a ghost canary out of his pocket and throws it at you, but poisonous ghost gas knocks it out before he can get to you. Um, I shouldn't have taken my... Uh, <laughs> my item that does magic damage off because it's the only thing doing damage to this guy now. Bludgeon him. The miner charges at you, but being incorporeal, passes through you without harm. Uh, he swings his ghost matic at you, but you jump behind a minecart. We got him. Ghost miner. Damn. Let's, uh, lunge smack him. There we go. Yeah, because this way we're doing more magic damage. Critical hit. Nice. Win the fight. Is this... Is this all that there is? Is this the only thing in there? Cardboard ore. Interesting. I remember this. This is a chunk of cardboard ore. I bet you didn't know they mined cardboard, eh? What, do you think it grew on trees? Yeah, I remember that. Lab, you're fighting a knob goblin, very mad scientist. This is one of the maddest of the mad scientists of Cobb's Knob. He's madder than a hatter. Well, madder than a regular hatter, but slightly less mad than a mad hatter. Bonk him. We need a scrumptious reagent and a menagerie key. Cool. To the menagerie. Cell 37. You approach the source of the mysterious psst sound and peek through the little barred window of the door. It's dark inside, but you can finally see the outline of a... You can see the outline of a figure moving in there. Hello, you call? Finally, a human. Look, can you help me out here? These crazy goblins are going to do some kind of insane experiment on me. I've seen some of the freaks they keep in their menagerie, and let me tell you, I know what you call it eager. You try the door handle, but it's not unexpectedly. It's locked tight. What can I do to help? Well, says the prisoner, I'd at least like to know what they're planning. One of the scientists should have a file on me or something. Think you can get a hold of it? I'll give it a shot. Uh, we did a good job, so I'm actually going to stop recording here and come back in just a sec. Just to, you know, make sure I don't bloat my videos with too much stuff. Also because I want episode, what is this, nine? I think it's nine. To be the one where uh, I kill the Knob Goblin and get a bunch of Labyrinth references because hell yeah. Um, I've been Alfred. This has been Kingdom of Loathing. Remember that this game is free and for all the stuff that is like a little time wasty, if you're doing it at the right level, it's still kind of rad. Um, there's still an efficiency to it. I'm kind of losing some of it because I am recording and because i'm grinding and other stuff like that 
this game's great. Go play it. Uh, thanks for coming by. Bye. Bye.